Um, thank you, Gary and Ulrich, and good morning, everyone. If you do not understand what I've got to say today, it is all my fault, and it is not the fault of the alcohol last night or the late, <laughs> late night. So what, what, what I'm going to talk to you about is the minimum clinically important difference for the patient evaluation measure, which is a patient-rated outcome measure that we use in the UK, very similar to DASH, but it's only for the hand, whereas the DASH is for the whole upper limb. Um, um, you can get a statistical significance if you're testing two groups, if you're comparing two different treatments, say collagenase and placebo. Um, uh, but the, clinical the, the statistically significant difference may not be clinically relevant. So it, the smallest change in a score that the patient can appreciate as a change, either an improvement or a worsening, is, a, is the minimum important difference. And that is what we want to establish in, our, in any score that you use and you need to understand um, uh, that score. So here what I'm trying to do is trying to identify the score for Deputrin's contracture of the patient evaluation measure. The patient evaluation measure has got three parts. It's got, uh, it is patient administered. It's got three sections. The first is patient experience. The second is the one that I'm concentrating on, which is 11 questions identifying all these attributes. This is an example where you got, uh, most of the time, the pain in my hand is now. And it's like a visual analog scale. It goes from non-existent, so no pain, to unbearable pain. And you then get that for all these. You score them, and uh, you create a out, uh, total outcome where zero is normal and 100 is severely abnormal. Now, what we did was we looked at 1,200 Deputin's contracture patients. And um, these are consecutive patients. Uh, 125 of them were dead, and we had the patient evaluation measure available at baseline and at the final review in 878, and we had 526 transition questions. I'll explain that in a minute. So here you have the, the patients. The mean follow-up is over two years, so as we know, the, most of the recurrences, most of the change occurs in the first year in most patients after, after deputants. Um, but note this, that two out of three were operated, and one out of three was not operated um, in, in our patient group. So the initial PEM, the initial score was 40. The final one at 27 months was 32. So the mean difference is only eight, and that is quite shocking. And it makes you think that even when you, we think that our measures are improving, our goniometry is improving, that what the patient perceives is not high. Now, here's the transition question, and we asked the patients how did they consider themselves compared to what they were before, from being cured at one end to terrible at this end. So these group, from the same to terrible, are where you've left them either no change or worse than before, and these are the ones that you've improved. So you can therefore divide the outcome into two groups, better, no better, or worse. And you use that then to look at the outcomes um, by, by where they are. And you can see that the mean um, Im improvement for those that consider themselves cured is huge. And you have no change in the, those that are in, in the middle over there. So you can use this then to do a receiver operating characteristic curve and using sensitivity and specificity to identify the best difference that will pick out the ones that are better versus worse. And that is the minimum difference in the score that the patient identifies as either a slight improvement or a slight worsening, and that is three points. So when you look at the ones that are operated versus the ones that are not operated, the ones that are not operated improve by the minimum, minimum clinically important difference over the same time, but there is three times the improvement if you operate on them. So although the, operate, um, the improvement is quite modest, patients do perceive uh, uh, benefit. So to summarize then, patient's disability improves regardless of surgery. 
Surgery gives three times the amount of improvement from natural history if you did nothing. One in four, one in four will worsen overall, that we leave them worse, and we're talking about those operated. I do not know the data for collagenase of a similar nature, for instance, and I do know some of the data for percutaneous needle fasciotomy. And you can see that if you, if you um, do not operate on them, then one in three worsen with time. So two out of three do not worsen with time. And if you operate on them, then roughly one in five are worse than they were before. And these are the summary that, that we need. And if you're constructing a study l using this as an outcome measure, then you want to construct it around three points as the minimum clinically important difference. Thank you. Thank you.